Hi everyone, this is Dr. Muhammad Afiz, uh, Department of Ophthalmology, Kim Scarborough. Today we'll talk about heterophoria and uh, some of the tests under heterophoria, uh, heterophoria. And today we'll be specifically discussing about the cover and uncover tests. In the coming classes, we'll test, uh, discuss the other tests too. Okay, we'll start the class. What is heterophoria? Heterophoria is nothing but a latent squint or a hidden squint where the squint, uh, squint is not manifested due to the action of fusion and the patient is having fusion uh, because of that uh, tendency for squint is inhibited by the fusion now we'll see what is that for example if a patient is seeing an object into his fovea this is this is the fovea and this is the fovea to the other eye these two are called as corresponding elements in the retina corresponding elements of one retina with that of the other so when the object is fused when the object is when the object is similar on the fovea of the both the eye the object uh, the uh, our brain tends to fuse this object for this, this is the object this will be fall here also will be fallen here also it will fuse it into single object in the brain and so this is called as fusion and it's called a sensory fusion when the similar objects falls onto the corresponding elements of the retina of both the eye sensory fusion occurs this is called a sensory fusion the muscles which helps in the for example medial rectus which helps to keep this fusion to be maintained it's called as motor fusion motor fusion is nothing but the muscles which helps to keep this uh, binocular single vision maintained binocular single vision maintained is called as motor fusion understood when you break this fusion for example you present the this is for uh, present an object of same i mean plus on this side and some other object here and try to break this this eye will dif drift inward or outward in case of heterophoria if the patient is having heterophoria or latent squint if the patient is having heterophoria it can be in the form of eso or exo heterophoria when the fusion is broken for example this side you give a plus image and this side before reaching the plus image you give some other image the fusion is broken fusion is broken understood if the patient is having exophoria if the fusion is broken if the fusion is broken in case of exophoria if the fusion is broken if the patient is having exophoria i will drift outward if the fusion is having exophoria this is called as exophoria if the patient is having uh, exo uh, exophoria the i will go inward understood uh, this is the concept about uh, breaking the fusion now once you break the fusion and uh, once you reinstitute the fusion for example if this image is removed and the patient is made to have the similar image on both the eye now once again reinstitute the fusion this plus is seen by both the eye earlier if the patient had exophoria exophoria now while giving getting back the fusion the eye will move in the opposite direction this movement is called as refixation movement refixation movement in case of exophoria in case of exophoria which has already moved outward the the refixation move the refixation movement to get the eye central it is inward understood understood so in the refixation movement in case of exophoria is inward similarly if the patient had esophoria esophoria means what the eye has been for example in esophoria the eye has been moved inward upon reinstitution of the fusion upon reinstitution of the fusion the eye will come outward 
this is called as the refixation movement to get the fusion back to get the eye central or to get the fusion back the eye will go come outward so in isophoria isophoria is the condition in which the eye has been moved inward upon breaking the fusion the refixation movement the refixation movement is outward onward to get the eye central or to get the fusion back understood this is the basic concept about uh, your uh, uh, cover and uncover test we'll see what is that okay uh, uh, coming to the types of isophoria you have isopho uh, types of heterophoria you have isophoria exophoria hyperphoria and cyclophoria cyclophoria can be in cyclophoria and excyclophoria one second isophoria and exophoria is the uh, one second divided based on the convergence insufficiency or we, uh, weakness or di divergence insufficiency or weakness for example for seeing a near object if there is an isophoria isophoria the eyes have been turned inward that means convergence is excess convergence is excess understood or for seeing the far object if the eyeball has been eye, if the while, while seeing the far object if the patient is having isophoria the eye has been turned inward or the visual axis is turned in, inward visual axis is turned inward it called as divergence weakness patient should have been diverging the eye what is divergence divergence is from the near object this is the eye the patient is focus, focusing on the near object the eye has been converged from near object as the patient happens to see the far object far object from near to far the eye should diverge understood while seeing the near object if the patient is having isophoria it is called as convergence excess the con this more converging more so it is called as convergence or seeing the far object if the patient is having isophoria is it is not if the patient is having isophoria they it, it means to say that the eye has been not diverged enough or divergence weakness understood similarly uh, in case of the eye while seeing the near object if there is exophoria understood no if there is an exophoria that means the uh, visual axis is not co converging here properly it's in this direction exophoria it is called as convergence weakness it is not converging enough so it is having convergence weakness exophoria while seeing the far object if there is a, uh, if, if there is an exophoria that means divergence is more will divergence excess understood it has more diverse so that exophoria it is called as divergence excess and there are some mixed type of isophoria also these are the classification of isophoria basically so you have isophoria you have exophoria you have hyperphoria vertical uh, isophoria then you have cyclophoria there is torsional isophoria heterophoria the encyclophoria the excyclophoria now we'll see a uh, cover test okay uh, number of tests have been performed for example visual acuity you can do uh, you have to do you have to do retinoscopy cover and cover today we'll be discussing about the cover and cover test and prism bar cover test then you have maddox rod test maddox wing tests um, there are other tests also near point of uh, near point of convergence and near point of accommodation test then uh, fu fusional uh, diver fusional amplitudes these are the different types of tests to be done in case of heterophoria. Now we'll see what is cover and cover test. Okay, in cover and cover test, what happens is patient patient will have to fix uh, this. This is the patient. Patient will have to. It it can be done for a uh, near and uh, cover and cover test can be done for near. That is a 33 centimeter or it can be done for far also both you have to do this are six meter now we'll discuss about the uh, far dis, uh, cover and cover test the basic of basic funda remains the same the patient has to fix it on an object at the uh, straight ahead and the oil pa uh, in case of heterophoria when the patient is fixing at the far object it will fix it on a uh, certain point of uh, certain object now what you have to do you get one cover in front of one eye understood 
now the fusion is broken fusion is broken fusion can be broken by covering one eye or um, getting a dissimilar objects in both the eyes a fusion is broken if the patient is having exophoria the eye and the eye under the cover this eye under cover will turn outward in case of exophoria or in case of uh, or in case of uh, esophoria if the patient is having esophoria the patient will the eye will turn inward in case of esophoria or in case of exophoria similarly what we have discussed uh, uh, in previously now we'll see what happens see here this is the right eye and the left eye left eye has been covered upon removal of the cover there is no movement inside the uh, under the cover also there is no movement of the eyeball there is no movement of the eyeball that means no phoria and upon removal see the in un cover uncover test in case of uh, hyperphoria or heterophoria this uncover is the most important part understood because under cover what happens no one knows so upon uncovering what happens that is what important upon uncovering the refixation movement you should note the refixation movement is very important the refixation movement to gain the binocular single vision or fusion this refixation movement is very important the, and and you, as you all remember the refixation movement is not is opposite to the movement of phoria and the phoria if exophoria is outward refixation movement is inward to get it central in case of esophoria esophoria it is inward esophoria is inward refixation movement will be outward understood this much you should remember okay now what is happening is no shift no shift means upon removal of the eyeball the, there is no movement of the eyeball is called as orthophoria ortho means straight okay is a normal condition orthophoria ortho means straight but uh, orthophoria is just an ideal thing because most of the people most of the people will have some or the other little bit of uh, phorias whether it is or exo little bit of phoria will be there but uh, orthophoria means there is no movement very uh, very less percentage of people will have this orthophoria now what is exophoria exophoria is a condition where upon covering see upon covering the eyeball has moved see here you can see here the eyeball has moved outward the eyeball has moved outward understood upon removal of the cover refixation movement movement is inward refixation movement is inward refixation is movement inward it's called as exophoria refixation movement it is called as inward or adduction or nasal recovery whatever you can call understood the Re refixation movement in case of esophoria what happens the movement of under the uh, cover the eyeball was inward understood upon removal of the cover it has refixation movement is outward or it also called as abduction or it can also called as temporal recovery understood this is how you test whether the patient is having esophoria exophoria in case of cover uncover test and remember it is a uncover part which is important in case of phoria and cover test in case of uh, in case of for example uh, the cover uncover test uncover test is used for phorias and cover tests is used for tropias always remember okay remember it as cup and ct ct scan cover test is for tropia cover and cover is for 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 you okay thank you if any doubts any corrections please let me know in the comment box comment section and if you want to know any about anything about other tests which is used in phoria or tropias please let me know in the comment section kindly like share and subscribe my channel and click the bell icon for further notification thank you thank you all